This sucks. Every time I watch a mechanic video, this guy right here, he makes me buy tools. I watch a video, next thing I know I got this. Stop making me buy tools, Jonathan. All right, how about some quick tips on dealing with windshield wipers that don't work on Hondas? All right, before we do anything, how about a little orientation? This is a seventh generation Honda Accord here, but most Hondas are set up similar. You can see, I have the cowl removed already. The cowl, the black cowl that goes over the top, you can see it's right here. This one's a two-piece unit. Some are only one piece. Most of the time, they're just on with clips. And of course, you gotta be careful. When you pop them off, you'll probably break clips. Um, but anyway, there's our windshield wiper linkage assembly right there, this metal rod that's going. And then here's our motor with a, an electrical connector. And then this post right here is where one windshield wiper would go. And then the other one's right here. And you can see I still have this one connected. So that's just a quick little overview so we know what we're talking about. Okay, and of course when these things go bad, it's usually raining. And a lot of times they stop with them stuck straight up just like that. Or, or off in an area like that. Um, and it's usually, of course, when it's raining and at the most inconvenient time at night or something like that. It's never when you just hit the, the washer fluid and you just want to wash it off real quick. Nah, it's always when it's raining and crappy out. But anyway, what I like to do when I'm diagnosing them, I want to know, do I need to go left or do I need to go right? And basically, do I need to go one way to see if it's a mechanical issue with like the um, linkage or whatever? Or do I need to go the other way and, and see if it's an electrical problem? And so a, an easy test that I like to do is I'll go in, make sure the key's on, and I'll turn on the wipers on intermittent. And I'll come out here and I'll listen for the motor to hear if I can, you know, hear it going and then stopping. And you'll hear it again and stop. And that means the intermittent's working. And then I'll go to low and do the same thing. And I'll hear it. I would just want to make sure that the motor's spinning. And you'll hear the hum. And if that is the case, then that's a good indication. It's not foolproof, but it's a good indication that our motor's probably okay and that our switch and everything else in the electrical system is okay and we don't want to look towards an electrical problem we want to look towards a mechanical problem and another way we can confirm that is and we don't need any tools obviously we haven't used any tools yet and we don't even need to remove the cowl or anything um, we just grab the wiper and see if it moves like this now I have the nut off but it's still on the splines there so it's still connected to the linkage and you see how I can move this freely normally you would not be able to do that um, so that right there that tells us we have an issue with the linkage and I can prove it if you just look down in there You can see the linkage moving and obviously if it was connected to the motor It would not be so we have an issue with the linkage Which is a pretty common issue and I'll pull this thing out and show you what's going on And to pop these out obviously you have to remove the cowl and then we have to disconnect their electrical connector And then there's usually a couple clips like this one has these two clips right here one and two you got to pull those out without breaking them and then we got one bolt two three and four four bolts and the whole thing comes out now of course you have to remove the arms first so there's usually a cap and then a nut that you have to take off and then you can pop the arms off sometimes you got to wiggle them and mess with them a little bit and you can pop them straight off sometimes they're on there really tight and you need a special tool to pop them off but usually you can get them off by hand I was able to get these off by hand um, and then you can just kind of maneuver it straight out. You just got to wiggle it past right here. It'll come out without having to bend anything or mess with anything. And while I'm thinking of it, when you're doing your preliminary tests and you, you grab the arms and try to move them and they don't move and you don't hear anything coming from the motor, no noise at all, probably going to need some electrical troubleshooting done all right as you can see that's what it looks like out of the vehicle this is how it sits in the vehicle just like this then we can look underneath here and you can see right away where our issue is you can see that this rod is completely disconnected and it just kind of connects right there with one of these caps you can see there's there's the cap that's broken right there and this is typical of what happens these caps break they're just plastic they snap off now they're pretty robust. They do last quite a quite a while. Um, so I know, yeah, it sucks they make them out of plastic, but they do last a decent amount of time. It's not like they uh, break overnight. 
um, but this is a very common issue and this is what happens when the, when they break they just pop off and then you can see that the linkage is loose and that's why we did that test just to see if it would move freely because that's what happens now don't beat yourself up trying to find these little caps and replace them I know there's some companies that make these uh, for a certain model of Hondas and you can just you know buy just this plastic piece and put it on there I don't recommend that I would uh, I would go to Honda and buy the actual arm itself now you could buy the motor itself you could buy the whole assembly the whole linkage assembly itself or you can just buy the two arms and that's what I recommend is just replace the arms with brand new ones they come with caps they already come with grease inside them and then you're good to go if you do that now most of them are marked A and B like this one is this one's marked A this one's marked B I'll get you a close-up here in a second um, and if you're going to replace them, I recommend replacing both because as you saw this one has a crack too Usually if one is messed up the second one is not far behind All right, and if we get a close-up you can see this one's stamped a right here And then over here this one's stamped B pretty typical of Honda's they like to stamp them So you know which one's which but like I said, I recommend replacing both of them and they're they're fairly cheap They're usually in the ten to twelve dollar range a piece uh, for most Honda dealers and when you replace these rods, not only does it correct the issue of caps that may be, you know, broken or almost broken and ready to fall off, but a lot of times what happens is play will develop inside these. These aren't too bad right here, but just for demonstration purposes, this is what happens when they, they kind of get messed up inside there. They start to get too much play like that, and that'll cause your wipers to kind of move back and forth. And when it gets really bad, um, your wipers can actually go off the windshield either at the bottom or at the top and so that's why I recommend if these caps go bad just take them off put new ones on and these they're pretty easy they just pop off just like that these pop off like that and the new ones just snap into place pretty darn easy and here are the rods that are gonna fix this vehicle right here you can see I got A and B and here's what the new rod looks like you can see brand new cap this area right here is where they generally get broken it's full of grease in there um, these are also marked you can see this one's marked A it's only marked on one side it's not marked down here um, and this one has a slightly different profile than the original ones no big deal they're exactly the same length and they'll snap into place just like the old ones see it doesn't take much effort to get these old ones off And another little tip, as you can see, this one's kind of covered up. It's easier to take, pop this rod off and then snap that one into place. And what I do, I just turn it over and press it onto my bench here and that pops it into place. And then I can do the same with these. But with this in the way, if I replace this one first, I can't really get to that. And I don't want to hammer it. I like to press it into place. That's what it looks like all fixed. You can see we don't have any play. And you definitely want to double check. You should be able to lift it up like that and these things don't pop off. You can see you definitely don't want these things to come apart. So verify that they've snapped in place. And usually you can feel them once they snap into place. You can feel that. New clips for all the ones we broke and new rods. Everything's working. Looks like we're back in business. Well, a new rod, that's what fixed this vehicle. As far as electrical troubleshooting goes, there are relay control modules in there and they're multiplex controlled, so they're somewhat complicated. Um, they're not straightforward like other, you know, like a window motor or something like that. So if I get one in that needs troubleshooting, I'll definitely try to film it so we can go over that stuff. But hey, as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.